In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, When you make a promise, do not do it with a vow. Let your yes be yes, let your no be no. It's one of those startling things that Jesus said. It makes us think and wonder why he said that. Well, our good friends, the Quakers, have for many, many centuries taken those words very literally. They will refuse to take a vow, to swear an oath, as it were, when in court or at any time. Their word is their honor, and they would stick with that. Now, how literally Jesus meant that is not that we should never take a vow, because Jesus himself did vow by his Father. And Paul, many times, he did give his word of honor through trusting in the name of God. Remember when Jesus was standing before Pilate, he actually, under oath, spoke the truth. But these Quakers have a wonderful way. And there's so much good that's come from that. And I'd like to tell you the story of what happened. In the 1600s, when some of these Quakers were required to, uh, under oath, give testimony, they refused and they were imprisoned for that. This was a very cruel thing to do just because they said, we will not swear under oath. Our word is our honor. We will say what we believe and you can take our word as real and as truth. But because they wouldn't swear under oath, they were imprisoned in the Newgate prison in London. But the prison conditions were so poor, so bad, that even after a little while, one of them died. Well, that created a stir. An inquest was arranged, and as the jury went to the prison to investigate how come this person died so soon under the conditions in the prison, they were appalled to see what was happening to those prisoners. And so it was arranged that a sheriff would be sent to the prison and he would move a large number of those Quaker prisoners to another prison where there will be a relief on, on the tight congestion within the prison. And here's what happened that was so special. The man who had been watching over them was also given the responsibility to now escort these prisoners from the Newgate prison to the new prison. Now, it was some distance in London and they would have to go through the streets and walk their way there. But these people, though emaciated, though thin, though they were hungry, they were carrying their belongings. And as they were about to leave the prison, this prison guard, who was meant to escort them, said to them, Sirs, I have watched you. And I know I'm meant to escort you. Well, you know the way to that prison. You are free to go and walk there on your own. I do not need to accompany you, for I know your word is reliable. And here were these prisoners who then picked up their belongings and walked through the streets of London, going through neighborhoods where the people would come out, couldn't help but notice this strange phenomenon. And when they noticed that they were without guards, that there was no one escorting them, knowing where they were going, inquiring what is happening, they would then say to these prisoners, how come? How come you don't flee? How don't you escape? Why don't you just break away and go into hiding? And here is the reply of their leader, Thomas Elwood. And he turned to them and said, our word is our honor. I believe that that is a wonderful lesson. When we think of the way God relates to us, where His word is His honor. Think of what God has promised. Jesus has promised to take our sins upon Himself, to die in our place, and He fulfilled that promise. But then He also promised you that He will be with you to the end of the age.
And he has another promise for you, and that is that he will come again to receive you to himself, to take you to live with him forever. Those are the promises Jesus has made. His word is his honor. He has sealed it with his blood. Now, he's not asking us to make promises, but he's asking us to make a commitment to him. Can God count on your commitment to Jesus? That it is a commitment that is wholehearted. It is a commitment that is not going to change by circumstances that change, but is a commitment that is your word and your honor. Jesus today invites you to make that kind of commitment to him. If you'd like to know more about the Fletcher Seventh-day Adventist Church, go to our website, www.fletchersda.org. There you will find that our purpose is to lift Jesus up and to love people in. There is also a link that you can click on, which says, Hope for Life. That's the title of a program that we plan to begin September the 9th, where every Sunday for 10 weeks, you can come at 6 p.m., have a meal with us, a presentation about Jesus and how to have a relationship with Jesus, and also a small group discussion time. This is a life-changing opportunity where you can discover that there really is more to life than this. Thank you for watching.